Good morning. Good morning, everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church Sunday morning um, Bible study. We are located at 385 um, Garrisonville Road, um, Suite 99, right here in Stafford, Virginia. We are under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor Reverend Florio Williams, right next to, to us, right there. Sitting next to me is um, Brother uh, Hutchings, um, Reverend Haverly Hutchings, and we are diving. We're studying from the book of um, Genesis all the way over. All the sermons and everything is on YouTube for you to go back and recap. We are currently in Deuteronomy, and we are at Deuteronomy chapter 18. And to this morning, we're going to start at... Um, Chapter 15, we covered the the, the 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 journey. We have been covering the journey of Moses coming through the, the wilderness um, with the children of Israel out of Egypt. We have covered their journey. We have covered their the, the commandments that the Lord has given them, their disobedience. We have covered their punishment. And right now we are up to where all the others have died out and we are, are, are about to go over into the promised land. But Moses is recapping everything that has happened before um, along their journey to make sure they're mindful of what God is asking them to do, what God has is demanding of them, because all the older ones who have experienced um, God's um, uh, uh, work is, is gone ahead. So now Moses is, is preparing these ones that are going over to see the promised land to um, be um, to, to be mindful of what God has put in place for them. So before we start, we're going to go ahead to, to God in prayer to ask his blessings on his word this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this another one of your word, dear Father God, going forth to your people. I'm asking you, dear Father God, right here as we sit, dear Father God, to, to send out your word, to bless us, Lord God, to forgive us of all your of, of all our sins, Lord God, to cleanse us and let us be, be ready, dear Father God, to receive your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding of your word so that you, therefore, can, can go forth into the hearts of those who we are spreading this word to. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have already done and everything that you're about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As I said, we're starting in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Brother Chris, would you take us to that one, please? Amen. Verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God, and for it in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even the prophet shall die. Mm -hmm. If thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? And 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. Mm -hmm. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Amen. That's a lot said right there because today we see people rising up in Holland. They are prophets. They are this, they are that, they are the other. And a lot of people are falling for that. Mm 
Yes. But most often, whenever uh, a prophet tells you something, what it is that if it doesn't come to pass, yes. then you know that's a false prophet. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Because what that prophet is doing is we were speaking about uh, spirits and um, uh, we say voodoo workers or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't come to pass, it's not of God. It's yes. not what it should be. And it's not where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's telling them here. If it doesn't come to pass, because what I always say is like I heard of my other pastor say, if a prophet tells you something today mm -hmm. and you're a child of God, if he had, God hasn't notified you of it, how's he going to tell another man about it? That's right. Because we have an open path to God for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We can go to him for ourselves. We don't need another man to call us up and tell us, uh, God said, he told me this, he told me that. Well, why didn't he tell me? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You all have anything on that or you have anything in the commentary on that? Um, on 15, it says, who, who is this prophet? Stephen used this verse to support his claim that Jesus Christ is God's son, the mm -hmm. Messiah, Acts 7 and 37. Mm -hmm. The coming of Jesus Christ to earth was not an afterthought, but part of God's original plan. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Okay. Now we know when Jesus spoke, we know when he spoke, something was happening. Mm -hmm. It was going to happen. Yeah. And also we know that Moses was a prophet. Mm -hmm. Why? What was he doing? He was speaking what God had yeah. told him to say. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and in the commentary of 18, 21 and 22, it says, the false prophet must not fear because he has no capacity to do harm except as he le leads God's people into error. Uh, a classic Old Testament example is Hannah, who project predicted that the, the Babylonians' exile would end in two years, but Jeremiah confronted him with the truth that the exile would last 70 years and mm -hmm. ha um, Han Hananiah would never live to see the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Hananiah was, um, ver um, died the very year of his false message. Addiction, so, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's like you say, when um, people will go out and people will hear things that um, they tend to believe because that's the... the the, the projection or the, the, the where their mind want to take them because that's what the answers they're looking for. But um, um, it's like, and then when they, when they do that, it's like the false prophet's uh, message is true because they want to believe that. But as the Bible says, um, God will, will put it out there and expose it to be a false prophet. Mm -hmm. Because the, it's, you're not going to... to, to um, um, you know, um, soil the, the plan of God then. You know, you're not, you can't right. change the plan of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a very good example because, um, what is it, Hananiah telling them one thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jeremiah said another, yes. right? And what, they were in uh, Babylon down there for 70 years. So what did God do? He just took the other one out. Yes. And today we have to be very careful today, very careful, because false prophets are rising up all over. Mm -hmm. Everybody's calling themselves a prophet. A prophet. All right. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, God has given us access to his word. Mm -hmm. He has also given us access to him. Mm -hmm. And if we are true believers, what says, let God be true. Mm -hmm. Man is a liar, but God yeah. is true. Mm -hmm. And the same way a uh, person, another person can read that Bible and tell you, God told me to tell you. Well, then what you're reading your Bible, you say, he didn't tell me that yet. Exactly. Because we are children of God, just like that person is. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful because it's out here today. And my, I was, we were talking to my niece about, um, we were talking about that kind of um, stuff last week Sunday and she asked me she said then um there are people out isn't there people still out here that God 
detox to, to give you messages. So how are you going to know them different from, you know, the false prophet? And um, I, I, I turned to her and I responded to her that God will send you confirmation because now you have direct access to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not like God isn't talking to everyone. You just have to read your Bible and listen, listen. for yourself. Amen. That's true. Amen. And a part of my, my commentary says, uh, God never contradicts himself. So if someone says something contrary to the Bible, we can know that what they say is not true. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Amen. And when, if, you're, if you're not reading the Bible, you won't know if what they're saying is contra- and contradicting the word of God. Oh, knowing the word of God. Yes. You have to know him for yourself. Yes. You have to know him. And then if you don't know, but so much, there's always a way. Go to your, uh, now everything is online. Yes. Uh, everything, and you also have the, in the back of the Bible, you have the old concordance. Look it up. Yes. Just don't take what people tell you. Uh, brother, uh, God told me to tell you this. Sister, God told me to tell you that. That, as I said, that's pretty much like uh, going to have a spiritual reading by a, um, I was to say Buddha worker. Yeah. They're going to tell you because it's all, <clears throat> they're psyching you up mm-hmm. to believe what they, <clears throat> excuse me, want you to believe. Yes. But you want that person to know I'm connected to, to God, God the same way you are. are. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And say so this is why God is trying to teach us. It's like it said, teach us from Genesis to Revelation mm-hmm. to depend on him, call on him. Yes. And then I was just studying this morning. He is no respect of persons. God does not show favoritism. Yes. All right. He wants us all. And in Revelations uh, over the third chapter, he says he rebukes those. He chastens those whom he loves. Amen. He's going to chasten us, put us back on that right path. Yes. And it's the only thing we have to do is just call on him. Yes. Amen. That's the type God he is. We don't have to go. <clears throat> we don't have to go to the church to ask the preacher this, to ask the preacher that, because we are supposed to be studying the same. He said we're all called. Yes. But we have to have that willingness, that heart, <clears throat> excuse me, to follow God, that willingness, as you say, to listen. Yes. When we're reading, we've got to listen. Mm-hmm. When we're studying, we have to listen. We can't run before and put things in God's mouth. That's right. He said we're not to add to or to subtract from. Didn't he say that? That's right. All right. That's okay. Right. We're going to skip the city of refuge because um, we've covered that a couple of times. Yeah. And <clears throat> we could just read the accidental killings, but we're not going to elaborate too much on that because we've covered it as well. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, chapter 19, verse 4, it says, And this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee hither, that he may live, whosoever killeth his neighbor ignorantly, who he hated not in the past. And as when a man goeth into the woods with his neighbor to hew wood, and he hand and his hand fetched a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head spitted from the heave and lightened upon his neighbors that he died, and he shall flee unto one of the city and live. All right, yeah. right there, right there. What he's saying is that's an accidental accident. killing. Yeah. And then the uh, cities of refuge, they had so many places where the people could go if it was accidental. Yeah. But if it were not accidental, they would still be killed. But if it, if it was an accident, then they wouldn't be killed for that murder. I mean, for that killing. Okay, go ahead. He says, less the, the, avri- the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot and overtake him because the way is long and slay him thereas he was not worthy of death in in as much as he hated him not in the time past therefore wherefore i commanded thee saying thou shalt separate these cities of for 
three cities for thee. And if the Lord thy God enlargeneth thy cause and has shown, hath sworn unto the, thy fathers and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to them, which I commanded thee, they be this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, this shall thou add three cities more for thee, for thee beside these three, that innocent blood may not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God has given thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, 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 go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I like it up there in um, um, verse six, where it, it, it tells us that, um, you know, if, if there's an, an accidental killing and, you know, you hear about it and you get angry and you get um, hot, you shouldn't um, try to go over, go after that person and, and kill that person because um, he's not worthy of death at that time because it's an accident so some people they they hear that their loved ones um died they don't they don't look at the facts or if it's an accident or or whatever it is they just get in, um heated in anger and and go after that person then now they're committing sin themselves because they haven't really stopped to um given the facts that is true because we're not supposed to be the judge or the jury Right. That is put in there for us. Uh, somebody read the commentary on 19.6, please. Revenge for murder was not only was not only permitted by the law, but fully authorized. In, and you see that in Numbers um, 35, 16 to 21. However, it was so malicious. It was for malicious murder only, not for accidental suicide, um, homicide, as in the present um, passage. Life is so precious that Old Testament law and customs mandate that it that it is violent destruction must be avenged, especially by the next of kin of the deceased. All right. And today we have our judicial system that covers all of that with the laws and whatever. But as I say, uh, if we look at it, all of it is not really perfect. Right. There's because that. we have a lot of innocent people nowadays Indeed. behind bars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm old too. There's a whole lot of innocent people on death roll as well. Yeah, that's behind, still behind the bars. Yeah, they're behind there. They're going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, kill and punish by death. That we have um, uh, mm -hmm. law regarding witness. Let's go to the laws regarding witnesses. Amen. That is 15, verse 15. Amen, 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Mm -hmm. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the, the man between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition and behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you and thine eye shall not pity but life shall go for life eye for eye two for two hand for hand foot for foot 
Amen. And it says it must be two or three witness. One man can't come before that. If I kill a person, I can't say, well, he did this or he did that. Mm -hmm. It has to be someone else there to tell the truth. And this is why I guess we have the jurors and everything today to um, they are more or less the judge and the jury. We have them there today to settle the case. Mm -hmm. But um, it says, if a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him, that which is wrong. In other words, whenever we see a person that lie mm -hmm. in front of the courts, yeah. mm -hmm. they should be the ones that's, well, they will charge them a fee for lying or whatever, mm -hmm. but there should be a stronger penalty for lying because standing up lying you are causing that person could cause that person's death yeah and in this system we have today a lot of that has transpired yeah okay and i guess that's what they say they, they say that they took it so um a life of a person so serious back in the days that any violent destruction must be avenged and even um lying um, because you have a uh, hatred for the person, that's a violent destruction of, of their life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, 1915, the commentary says, to prevent a miscarriage of justice, mm -hmm. the law requires the testimony of two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. And that is to pre prevent what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, 20 says, should uh, a malicious false witness turn out to be guilty of perjury, he must suffer the fate intended for the accused. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's really that's the way it should be today. Uh huh. Yeah. But we don't see that today. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Down there, it says, and then I shall not pity, but life shall go for a life an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and a hand for a hand and a foot for a foot. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't set out to take another's life. Yeah. Why? Because God created us all. And in his eyesight, but as I said, no favoritism is shown. Yeah. He doesn't love, he's no respect of person. He doesn't love one any more than he loves the other. Yeah. And he doesn't want people come it could be me that someone tells a lie against mm -hmm. and I could die for that lie. Yes. And today we have to be very careful mm -hmm. because even children will tell a lie. They could get yes. a parent killed. Yes. So we have to be very careful of what's going on and how we, um, how we take care of the matter. Yes. If not, we could cause serious harm or death. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody, anything else on that? Uh, I like how they got uh, in 17. It says, um, shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judge with the Lord coming first. A lot of us need to remember, you know, that scares me putting my hand on that Bible saying, I swear to Ooh. tell you, so help me God. You know, Amen. I think a lot of people have lost focus on that. You yes. stand before the Lord first. Just like they got it. You stand the Lord first. Yes, yes. Put your hand on that Bible intentionally lying. Mm -hmm. while you swear to the God. That's not a very good thing. Yeah. Like but you, you know. You get, get over on the judge and everybody else, but you're never going to get over on the Lord. Amen. But did, look, this, now, Brother Chris, look at the society where we're living today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People care nothing about God. No. No. They they will uh, tear up this Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, as I said up there on January the 6th, they were in their little prayer groups praying. Well, you're praying. Would God tell you to go in there and do what they did? Mm -hmm. So they misuse the, the word of God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, this Bible, they would put their hand on the Bible, stand on it, sit on it. They don't care. It's it's call lying. Mm -hmm. It's all about the devil's workshop. However they can get over to do what they want to do when they want to do it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, people today will literally cuss, curse God. This is why, as I said, I think we discussed that before. There was a time you wouldn't even say, oh my God. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Right. Yes. 
but if look at your, uh, I think I have to go back to my uh, HGTV shows when they're looking at these new homes. Oh my God. And I'm saying, listen to this. Mm -hmm. They don't realize it's just become a, a part of their, um, yeah, everyday vernacular today. Mm -hmm. But uh, the same thing with the Bible. They don't believe it. What's in there, they don't believe it. Unless they can see it. This is why we have so much idol worship um, today. Why? Yeah. Because they are worshiping things they can see. Same way they did back here in the Bible. The Israelites, when they get tangled up with the Canaanites, Hivites, Hittites, whatever bites they are, bites, what would they start doing? Serving the same gods they would serve. Yeah. This is why he tells us that we have to be careful. We have to uh, come from among certain things because if we can see it, we can touch it, we can feel it, then we will start to believe it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, just like he said, we should, when it comes to this Bible, it should be sacred to people. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they would put their hand on the Bible and lie in a minute. In a minute. In a minute. And then look at the lawyers. I've killed somebody. I get a good lawyer. That lawyer's job is to get me off. That's mm -hmm. right. He's going to tell every lie in the book. Mm -hmm. He's going to get everybody he can mm -hmm. to lie. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, society we're living in. Yeah. This is basically what we've seen from Genesis to Revelation. Not just like that, but he's showing us what will happen. Mm -hmm. How people can turn us around. Turn us from our God. We have to be strong in the Lord. We do. Yeah. Each day, if we don't read it, we need to think about what we've read. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just some scripture we've read, just some time during the day, where it can keep us focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there's so much in this world that is tempting. Mm -hmm. But we know we're not tempted by God. Yes. Yeah. But if we can stand up and lie on this Bible, they are not looking to the Lord today. That's right. That's right. And they, let's face it, people, when they get sick, a lot of them, they only call on God. If they're atheists, they will only call on this God that we know when they're sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The minute they're better, mm, they don't know him. The doctors did it and the medication did it. They don't know God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're up against. Yes. You know, and uh, two or three witnesses, you can have all the witnesses in the world, but if you got a good lawyer, that's yes. Right. You can be guilty of sin and he's going to get you all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that right in God's eyesight? No. No. But in money's eyesight? Yes. And that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, priest prepares Israel for battle. Brother, um, one of you, whatever. All right. You want to take it? 20. When thou goest out in the battle against thine enemies and see, seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not. Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up and out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them hear o israel ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither by ye terrified because of them and for for the lord your god is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you I got so much out of that. I really did. It just thrilled my heart because, you know, as I said, when we're reading this Bible, we're putting ourselves in there because mm -hmm. what he's saying, he says, uh, when you go out against your enemies mm -hmm. and we have some enemies in this world, we have some enemies in this world. So when we go out against them, he said, regardless of what we're faced with, he uses here. Uh, the horses and chariots and whatever, but whatever we go out with, whatever we come up against, mm -hmm. we know what did he said. He said, be not afraid. You don't have to be afraid of what's coming up against you. Mm -hmm. He says, therefore, the Lord 
thy God is with you. In other words, wherever we go, because the Bible says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So we know that he is with us. The Lord thy God yeah. is with me. So why should I be afraid? Say I have a, a, um, a job that I'm going to go to today to see if I can get this job. Yeah. Well, there's a little devil sitting in, on your shoulder saying you're not going to get it. But I but say, Lord God said, this is mine. I call it. Call those things to be not as they were. If I'm going up against, um, say, uh, I've done something, going up against a court case or whatever, mm -hmm. I've got this. you got to go in there with that confidence. I've got this because the Lord God is going before me. He's going to prepare the way for me. He told me, yes, I may feel a little down. Mm, I may feel a little faint, but I know God's got it. Yeah. So I have to go ahead. Me, I'm coming up against. Uh, this battle of cancer now. I can't say, oh, the cancer's got it. No, God's got it. That no. cancer is an enemy. This that's thing right. that's coming up with me tomorrow, that's an enemy. Yes. So if I give in to it and say, oh, it, it's got me. Oh, I'm, I'm this. I'm... No, God's got it. He told me right here, he said, fear not, the Lord thy God is with thee. Yes. See, this is what we have to take this Bible, not to read it, to see what he did with Israel, not to see what he did with the Canaanites, the Pesachites, the Habites. No, to see how it's going to work for us today, yes. because he said he is no respect of persons. He That's didn't right. care a bit more about them back then. He didn't show any more favoritism with them back then than he'll show for us today. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God. And then he tells us over there, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes, God. Only thing he wants us to do, he says, the battle is not yours. It's he God. said, it's mine. It's the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. Yes, so this is what he's saying here. I got so much out of this when yes. I read it. I just started jumping. Thank you, Lord. Because yes. what he meant for them, this Bible is to teach us to lean and to depend on him. Yes. What did I tell you before? From Genesis up to Deuteronomy. What did he kept saying? I am the Lord thy God. I yes. am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. Get to Deuteronomy. Love the Lord thy God. Love the Lord thy God. So yes. the only thing we have to do because he is love. Yes, God. And we are his. So he said he'd never. What is the last verse down there? It said, for the Lord uh, your God, it is he that goeth with you mm -hmm. to fight for you against your, your enemies. enemies. Yes. In other words, to save you. So that's what we have to depend on. Read this Bible and put yourself in there. Yes, Lord. This is what he wants us to do, to know that he is preparing us. This yes. is why Moses gave these three sermons to these people, because that first set was very rebellious. Mm -hmm. He made them walk around until they all died out. Then he's raising up a new generation. Yes. God. What we're in this new generation. So the, what he want us to focus on, focus on his word. Yes. Focus on him. Yes. To know, let me tell you something. Was <laughs> nothing too hard for God. Nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. No. Nothing impossible. It's only one thing that he can't do and that he, he cannot fail. Yes. That's right. He can't fail. So mm -hmm. we know that when we read this Bible, sit back, mm -hmm. be happy. Yeah. Because said, oh, he did this for the Israelites. Well, now I just read this morning. I, I've been going through this and I'm collecting my data because there's so many places. The Bible said it was starting over here uh, in Judges, first beginning of Judges this morning. Uh, Israelites, they did evil in the sight of God. He delivered them. They were in the captivity 20 years. They was in captivity. We think that Egypt was the only place they were in captivity. No. Mm -mm. Down through, read Judges. Mm -hmm. Look at the Judges, Ruth. Look at the Judges that was back there. That he, Gideon, he, we read the story of Gideon, but we don't know why. Mm. He raised Gideon up to deliver the people. Why? Because God had put him into captivity again. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, whenever we are down in sickness, that's our captivity. Yes. When we are down in depression, that's our captivity. Yes. When we have no money in our pockets to pay our bills, that's yes. our captivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we're down and out, God will send somebody. Mm -hmm. He will deliver you one way or the, or the other mm -hmm. because we're his. Yes. 
And as long as we're his and we're keeping our eyes on him, he said, the battle is not yours. Yeah, that's right. And anytime he tell you stand still, but now while you're standing still, you yeah. got to believe, you got to keep the faith and yeah. you got to trust him. Mm -hmm. yes. If you don't do that, it's null and void. All right. I'm, anybody else? I'm rambling on again. I, I, I got out of it um, that, you know, all this war that we're seeing, we have to realize that um, we have to take it like a, 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 a symbol of what is going on with us today, as you said, because our biggest enemy is ourselves. Our biggest enemy is our beliefs and our minds. Because when we when we don't believe in the right thing and set our mind on God, as it says in the word, then the devil is going to use everything else around right. us to attack, right. to attack us mm -hmm. because our mind is not in the right place. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so we have to we have to emancipate our minds from the slavery of sin and, and concentrate on the word of God because that is the only thing that is going to keep us on the path that for, for God to go before you and fight for you that's and right. save you from yourself. Amen, that's right. Amen. We are our own worst enemy. It's what Amen. he gives us. He gives us free will. Amen. Praise God. You can will to do right or you can will to do wrong. That's entirely yes. up to you. Yes. It's what we want to do. And that's the same thing. If we want to have life and have a good life, eternal life, mm -hmm. it's up to us. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Just know he'll fight your battles for you. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, reasons for exemption from, uh, from battle. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Um, that's uh, We are in um, Deuteronomy chapter 20, and we're going to go from um, verse 5. The word of God says, And the officer shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that has planted a vineyard and has not yet eaten from it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there that has betrothed a wife and has not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house lest he die in the battle and another man take her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be when the officers have made an end to speaking unto the people that they shall take captains of the armies and lead the people and, and lead the people that that's the end of of that um, amen. Mm -hmm. amen so uh what uh, this speaks basically what i'm saying here is when um, men were getting ready to go out and i guess you all can identify with that getting ready to go out to army First, he said, um, build a new house. He has to dedicate that. Next, he said, plant a vineyard. He has to, um, if he hasn't eaten of that. And then next, he said, um, if he was engaged to a wife or if he'd married a wife, let him take care of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, in other words, if a person, if what, I'm, what I got from that, if you go into battle, Mm -hmm. and you're not prepared mentally, mm -hmm. that is going to have um, reflect on you trying to do your job properly. As yeah. I said, I haven't been in the armed forces. You all can speak to that. It's like you, you got to, um, and that's why you, you go through um, basic training and, and everything to condition your mind and your body to leave everything that you have um, behind 
and it, it um we normally say like basic training it breaks you down to build you back up so that you you can be focused on the on the task that lies ahead and and everything um else is is um comes second nature because now you're built up to focus on going out there to war because just one split second um with your head off somewhere is is, is a matter of uh, mm -hmm. between life and death Mm -hmm. So um, I, I like it because when you are in the army of Christ, it's just like that. You have to you have to allow this word to build you up and um, break you down because um, living in sin for how many years? It's it, when you read the word of God and it cuts you and it goes through you and it brings to light something that you never knew that you were sinning about and it's hard for you to get rid of it you have to as as the bible says be circumcised in the heart mm -hmm. so that you can now focus on the word of god so that when you're fighting this fight mm -hmm. and going out you are you are dedicated to the point where when false prophet come up when anybody else bring anything to you you will recognize it immediately because mm -hmm. the, the word of god says my sheep will know my voice Mm -hmm. So, um, being in, in this passage right here, it's not for the faint hearted. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You can't stand on the line. You have to decide to follow God wholeheartedly so that you can dive into his word and learn for yourself how to become the soldier of the Christ of, of God's army. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother Chris, you have anything on that? No, I, I agree with uh, Reverend Hutchins. I mean, you want to do all those things uh, before you go to war so that when you get there, your your mind is focused on the, mm -hmm. on the uh, mission ahead instead of, focusing, you know, somebody back home. You know, you know, we always do the child care thing, making sure mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's supposed to be at. You always, you know, update your wheels and all that before you, you go out there. So that mm. you know, everything, if something does happen to you, you're not worried about the family or any any of your loved ones, and that gives you that focus you need to focus on the mission ahead. So, amen. Definitely, amen. Person there. <clears throat> amen. Well, I thank you for that, but I think we're getting down to the wrap up part. I've gotten wrap up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the next one we will be on war with outsiders amen uh-huh okay well um and any last word brother i just like you know um uh, and the pastor hit it and i think she was uh, dead on you know if you know if you don't get anything else out of what we covered today uh deuteronomy 21 through 4 i would circle that write it down uh that is a powerful just like the pastor is very powerful mm -hmm. and my commentary says uh just like the israelites we sometimes face overwhelming opposition at school at work or even at home right. we feel outnumbered and helpless god boasted the israelites com confidence by reminding them that he will he will he was always with them and that he would save them from the potential dangers they face Mm -hmm. We too can feel secure when we consider that God is able to overcome even the most difficult odds. Yes. So with that, you know, I would say, you know, don't uh, don't be be afraid to to walk through those doors the Lord has opened for you. Amen. It's your blessing because of fear, or you became overwhelmed, or you think you can't do this, or you can't do that. Because when God is with you, you can do anything. Amen. Lord, amen. And mm. uh, my last word, I, I was, I, I would just to say, set your your eyes on the things above, and um, know that the Lord is in charge. He says He will go before you, and He will fight your battle for you. And all you have to do is set your affairs to um, put put all your affairs in the hands of God, and He will take care of it for you. Because that is why He sent His Son, so that we don't have to. Um, um, go and do all the stuff that that is done in the Old Testament. All we have to do right now is to just um, accept that he is Lord, know that he is taking care of your life, believe in him, and give your life over to him and become a child of God so he can take care of you. Pastor, any last words? Well, he said, 
many of times, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Mm -hmm. He was, he is, and he is to come. And what we have to do is step boldly before the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. That means that we have to be bold when we go to him. Mm -hmm. And we will see, it was uh, in that this morning for myself, we will see that there were no really perfect people, only Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Even in the Bible, as we were studying, there was no really perfect, perfect people. God used those people. Moses, as we go, I keep saying, Moses was a murderer. People get misled. Moses mm -hmm. was a, a murderer. Gideon had, he told God, I can't do it. I was from a poor family. Uh, we had, uh, Ruth was a Moabite. We had the different people that we can look. Uh, Rahab was a harlot, but she's in the line of Jesus Christ. What he's looking for us. Yes, go back to that Old Testament, study it. Yes. What those Israelites did wrong, mm -hmm. we do right. Mm. Amen. Praise God. And if we do that, we know that we are on the right track because he loves us one and all. And I name those people out because they were not perfect. And a lot of people think before I can go to Christ, I have to give up this. I have to give up that note. You go. Amen. That's He's right. the one. The Bible said that God is the one that's going to pick you up, and wash you off and then hand you over to his son. Mm -hmm. But you need to make that first step and call on him and go to him mm -hmm. and just tell him, Lord, I am not perfect. That's mm -hmm. right. Because we said Gideon said, I can't do it because I'm from a poor family. Moses said, I can't do it because I can't talk right. Mm -hmm. Yes, God expects us to come shimming and shaking, fighting. But just be willing to stand and listen to him. Yes. And once we listen, then we know that we're on the right track. Got it. Yes. God will pick us up and take us the rest of the way, providing. But will we fall? Israelites, that's why I says, uh, we're going to get on that one day. Those Israelites kept falling. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible says they did evil in the sight of God. They did evil in the sight of God. They were down there for 20 years, They're over there for eight years, down here for so many years. They did evil. They weren't perfect. Yes. We are not going to be perfect, folks. A lot of times we think, and you get these religious fanatics will tell you, you, are, you have to be perfect. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. But just believe in God. As uh, Reverend Hutchins said, love him with mm -hmm. all your heart. Yes. Trust have faith and believe. Yes. And you see a different light. Okay. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God for the word today. Um, God has reiterated again what we have been saying all this time. So just just give your life to God and just try Jesus and see. You know, don't take a word for it. Try him and 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 see. Um uh, what do you got to lose? You know? Um let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this another one of your word, of your message. Let it go out to the hearts that need it, Lord God. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to, to let them, let everyone that have heard your word ponder upon it, go back, study it, and you can speak to them, Lord God, in at their level. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We, as again, we don't take it for granted that you chose to, to sit and listen to the word of God with us. Um, I um, have a few announcements. We have Bible study again um, on Wednesday, uh, which is the continuation of this Bible study, going deeper into, in, into the word of God, learning more, um, you know, bringing the mirror of our lives before us so that we can change what God wants us to change. Um, pray with us on, on Tuesday. Um, the prior line number is 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379-088-POUND. The Lord is doing great and mighty things on this prior line, folks. You do not want to miss your blessings. We want God to bless you, to change your life, because 
things are changing. Things are shaking up where there's healing on this line because we're reaching out and we're touching God and, and God is, is responding to, to our prayers and stuff. So come and pray with us. I repeat, the prayer line number is 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379088-POUND. Do not miss your blessing. Join us um, Sunday, um, every Sunday at 9.30 for a um, sermon um, on Ministries of Hope Christian Church Facebook and on uh, YouTube and sometimes on Instagram. Um, sun the Sunday morning um, sermons are posted at 10.30. Another Sunday school Bible study will be on Sunday at 9.30 on facebook and youtube as well donations to this ministry can be uh, made at ministries of hope christian church dot com using the square or the paypal and remember if you like this if it has blessed you share it and um, send it out do not let it stay with you because the like the word of god says go it should go his word should go on the highways and the byways so just send it out so that someone else can um, um come and know the goodness of the lord as well thank you so much for watching us uh, we hope to see you again soon have a blessed week and just let the, the power of god steer you into the direction that he wants to take you amen, amen.